Okay, see a lot of good stuff out there. Now, if I had some kind of a formula, I could plug all these numbers into the formula and it would find the area, right? But we want to not have that be mysterious. Okay? Why do the numbers go in there? Why does that formula work? Okay, that was the purpose of the homework and what we're about to do. Right? So let's do this one together using the method from before and then use that method to make a formula that we can just plug numbers into and have it work. Right? So what was that method we used, Colby? Base times height. Well, we're not quite there yet, right? We have to, if we're going to use oh. base type height, that's a rectangle, so we have to make a rectangle. Oh, you flip that one. Okay. Copy it, flip it. All right, so we flipped it. And then what do we do, Colby? Uh, add. 17, 23. No, why is that? You gotta make the 90 degrees. So you're talking about cut that off? Yeah. Okay. Now, we have, what shape is this before we cut that triangle off? Parallelogram. Parallelogram. It is a trapezoid, but it's even more special than that. It's a parallelogram. And if we remember the formula for a parallelogram, it is base times height. So we can just find the base and the height and multiply together. But if, if, even then, if we don't remember that that's the formula for the area of a parallelogram, we can do a whole move through this over here. And now what shape is it? Rectangle. Rectangles are so nice for finding the area because the area of a rectangle can be found by doing what? Base times height, yeah. Count the squares, but to calculate those squares, base times height. Right? So it's easier to see up, up top here. How would I find? How long this base is? Is it? 17 times 23. 17 times 23? No, no. plus. Oh, plus, yeah. Plus, yeah, 17 here, 23 more, 17 plus 23. 40. 40. 40, okay, so that's, we'll just know that that's 40 inside the parentheses. What do I do then? Now I have this base. Times by 9. By 9, that's the height. That's the height. 360. Um, Divide by, by two. Divide that by two. 180. 180. The reason I'm writing like this, and I'm not computing every step, because this looks more like a formula. Right? Like this shows me where the numbers should go. Right? So we divide by two. Why, why do we divide by two? I can see the base times height thing, but why divide by two, Kelly? Because you duplicated it. Because of what? You duplicated it? Yeah, because we copied this. We got that. I think I just had Colby between me and you, and I couldn't quite hear. His head blocked a lot of that sound. We doubled this shape in the first place, so now the area is twice as much as it needs to be, so we cut that in half to get back to the original area. All right, and that comes out to be? 180. 180. 180. Squares. 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 Squares? Squares. Squares. Raise your hand for squares. Okay. Squared? Raise your hand for squared? Nope. I'll be. 180 squared? No. 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 That would be a different number. Right? 180. Right. 180 is huge. And that's no longer the number of squares that fit inside this trapezoid. Okay. So it's squares. Remember, what is the area? The number of squares that fit. How do we count those squares? Well, we made a rectangle, so base times height, that's two when we divide by two. So that's how many squares fit in that trapezoid. Okay? But there's this thing, like we want to put that little two somewhere. So we get confused about that. Right? Why can't why am I not using that little two anywhere? Huh? Yeah, I'm not yeah, I'm not squaring it, but I'm not using it at all. How would I like maybe I have to give you more information for you to be able to say it's something squared. What more information would I have to give you? What's that? The units, says James. What does James mean by units? Inches, meters, Right, so give me a unit. Inches, the first person to speak wins. Inches. So it's 180 squares, but now we know what kind of squares are they? Inch. Inch squares. Square inches. However you want to say it. 
two squares. Right? It is an inch squared. It is an inch, one inch by one inch. Right? If you multiply an inch by an inch, well, we have an inch times an inch, inch squared. That's what that means. It really just means a square. That's an inch on every side. Okay. So bad about it. What are you bad about it? You were walking me through the whole thing a minute ago, didn't you? Well, you told me squares, right? Not square. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to say, oh, here's the new way we find areas. I certainly do not do this every time I find the area of trapezoid. But every year that rolls around, and I teach math again, I need to be reminded of what the area of a trapezoid formula is. And I always forget it. Every year, I do not know what the area of trapezoid formula is. So do I Google it? No, no, that would take much too long. All I do is I do this little copy, flip, cut. Right, OK. I know that now, uh, what I would need to do to find this area would be add 17 and 23, multiply by the height, divide by 2. Right? And that would work for any trapezoid. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to take this, we're going to apply it to any trapezoid any trapezoid in the world or the universe. Copy this, new page, put it in there. Okay. Now let's just not be specific. But no matter what these numbers are, they go right here in the height. No matter what those numbers are, would you agree we're going to do the yeah. same thing? Yeah. Same yeah. thing, same thing. It's 23 and 17, 45 and 24, or whatever the numbers are, we're going to do the same thing every time. Okay, so let's call the number that would go here Plus you. base number one. And this one, base number two. And this height, we'll call H. Because you just keep doing that, you call it the height H. Okay. So when I do this copying thing, right, what winds up being up here? B1. B2. B1, yeah, B1. You're right, B1. I thought B2. But no, yeah. B1 winds up getting flipped up there. And here's B2. Two. Okay. And if we choose to go this way and move this over here, well now we have a rectangle and the height is 9. Well, no, it's not. It's h. Right? And we do the exact same thing to all of these variables as we just did to the numbers in the problem we got done with. Right? It's a rectangle, base times height. What's the, how would I find the base of this rectangle? Add base two and base one. Add base two and base one. Or base one plus base two. The addition doesn't matter which order you do it in. I do that. I got the base of the rectangle. Now what? Hunter? Multiply by the height. And then divide by two. This is what we call a formula, right? It kind of labels all the parts that are involved, the sides and the height of uh, this trapezoid and tells us where to plug it in. The point of all of this, the copying and the rearranging and the flipping and the cutting and the moving, is so that this is not something that you have to memorize, right? I don't think I've ever memorized this formula. I just have a little movie that plays in my mind every time I want to know what the area of the trapezoid is. I remember that two trapezoids can make a rectangle that has a base of base 2 plus base 1, a height of, well, the height of the original trapezoid, but twice as much area as I need, so I divide it by 2. Every time I need to know the area of a trapezoid, and I've forgotten it because it's been too long, that's what I do. And I want you to be able to do things like that. You can create knowledge. You don't have to be told facts that you didn't memorize and repeat back to them, whoever it is, teacher or anybody else. And just create it. Okay? So give it give it a try. Explain this formula to somebody who doesn't know what it is. You know, explain to a parent. I'll be really impressed. Okay? Everybody cool with that? That makes sense? Mm -hmm. We're all on the same page? That kind of neat? You think? Yeah. 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 Alright, two people say yeah. Yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do next, I think, is yeah, there it is. Now, yesterday, I had up here 
what's this, uh, you know, what's the line straight across the circle, right? We answered that. Yeah. What's that called? Diameter. Diameter. And um, we talked about the binders and how we stack the binders ultimately. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, did we talk about how many diameters fit around? Yes. Four. How many fit around? Three. Four. 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 That number's called? Pi. 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 Okay, so the circumference is uh, pi times the diameter, right? 3.14 diameters. 3.14 times the diameter will give me all the way around the circle. Right? So here's the diameter. Just a quick recap here. Here's the diameter. If I put one of them down around the, the outside, it gets to maybe there. Another one gets to maybe there. And the third one maybe to there. And there's that little gap. Right? I need a piece of a diameter. How much of a diameter do I need to fill in that hole? 0.14. I think we found out the next big class after this one after lunch was 265. So 7 would be rounding up 6. So 2, 3.14. 1592265. Yeah, whatever. I don't expect you to remember all that. You get the idea. That little bit is 0.14 of a diameter to fill in that little gap there. Then, I don't know if I said this or not, but I'll say it now. The diameter is also two of these things. Radius. radius. Two times the radius gives you the diameter, right? Mm -hmm. One radius times two, two radiuses makes a diameter. And the typical way we write this formula is 2 pi r, though it's not any different. It's 2 pi r or pi times 2 r. So just multiplying three numbers together, 2 pi and r. Um, now, the thing that's going to come in handy is what we're about to do is make a rectangle out of a circle. Okay? Just like we made rectangles out of all the other shapes, we're going to make a rectangle out of the circle. What? To get how we do that, we need to talk about this right now. So all the way around, all the way around, we can use 2 times pi times the radius to find all the way around. Agreed? Okay. When we build this rectangle out of a circle, we're going to want to know, just to be able to notice, that half, just half, not all the way around, half of it, Half of the circumference. Well, it wouldn't be all of this, right? It would be all of 2 pi r. How much of that would it be? Half. Half of that. So if I take 2 pi r and I take half of that, one pi r. it's 1 pi r. Can we do this? No. We didn't do this last class? No. Good job, Jane. 1 pi r is half of the circumference. Agreed? All right. Now, let's talk about what we've done here real quick. 2 pi r, we can view it as pi times d, right? Because two r's is one d. Yeah. And now this is also not so much of a mystery anymore, right? Pi times d means 3.14-ish times d, which really means that that's the circumference. And you can see it. You can pretty much everyone guessed somewhere around three was the number of diameters that people around the circumference, right? And now you know because I've helped you bridge that gap just a little bit. You made a guess of three, and I said, really close, it's actually 3.14. And you recognize that it's pi, and now, less mystery. The less mysterious math can be, the better. So less mystery, then we come here, and now we know pi r gives us what? 3.14? No, that is 3.14. Oh. Take pi times r, what part of the circle does that give me? Uh, half of the the circumference, half the circumference, half the circumference. Here's the whole circumference, that's three-ish diameters. We rewrote that as two times pi times r. We cut that in half to find what half the circumference was, half the circumference is one pi r. This is Okay. Well, we did that already. So here's, we're gonna start off slow. We're gonna build up to making a rectangle out of a circle. <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. Okay. All right, so here's where I asked you to talk about binders. Okay. Oh. 
You see how they're stacked? Yeah. They're horizontal, but they're, they follow that pattern. So just to wrap our heads around this, let's just imagine we cut the circle into 14 pieces. We stack them like the binders, side by side. Okay, Side by side. Okay. Ask you a couple of questions here. How long is this from here to there? Well, it relates back to the circle in some way. Oh, three point one. Three point one four. Four. One four. Here's a circle. We cut this piece out. One fourteen. Well, the piece itself. I'm asking if I took a ruler and measured from here to there. Three point one four. It would measure the same as what part of the circle? Oh, half the radius. Radius is what I'm trying to get at. The radius. Oh. Right? If I take this piece and I put it right there, well, that radius there, well, it winds up right there. So that side of the piece of pie is equal to whatever the radius of the circle is. Plus you. Okay? You lock that down? Yeah. You got that? Yep. All right. So that piece of pie, like, and all of these pieces of pie all have sides that are equal to the radius. No matter how big the pieces are, no matter how skinny the pieces are, Size of the radius. Okay. Now notice as we as we stack these alternatingly, okay, we get some bumpiness up here, this bumpiness down here. Why are these things bumpy, Kelly? Because of the outside of the circle. Circles. The outside of the circle. You know, they're little pieces of the circumference, right? So. If I add up all of these, like I walk along and I measure it with a, a string or something, right, all the way around, and down here, I'm adding up little pieces of the circumference, right? So if I add up all of them, what will I get? All of the bumpiness here and down here? So if I add up all the, the bumps here and down here, I'll get this? The circumference. The diameter. It will, I'll, walking along here and down here would be the same as measuring all the way around the circumference. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? This little piece was right there. This little piece, that's piece number four, so that actually comes from right here, okay? This piece right here, comes, oh, this was two, so it comes from here, and then this piece comes from here. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, if I add up just the top parts, then what do I have? Half the circumference. Half of the circumference. And the circumference, half the circumference is equal to what? Pi. One pi. One pi. Pi r. We did it back here. Oh, I just closed. Pi r. Half the circumference. It's just one pi r. Not two pi r. That's the whole circumference. One pi r is half the circumference. So if I add up all these bumps on top here, then I get pi times r, and here is the radius. Okay. All right. Take a little breather. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Pi r here, half the circumference, because the other half is down here. And all the sides are these straight parts of where you cut the piece out that's as long as the radius of the surface. All right. Ready for the next one? No. <laughs> what do we need to do to get ready? Let's go. Do you understand why this is r? Yeah. This is the same as this. No. Okay. Do you understand why this is pi r? No. Okay. We'll go back to why. Why is this curved? Why is this thing curved right here? Colby. Colby. It's <laughs> part of the circle. Yes, it's part of the outside of the circle. This, the curvy part of the circle. Right. Okay. And so half of the pieces that we cut, they point down. Right? And the bumpy parts are up on top. And the other half, they point up, and the bumpy parts are down here. Right? Remember, those, those round parts came from the outside of the circle. We call the outside of the circle the circumference. Right? Well, half of those curvy things are up here, and half of them are down here. Right? So if I add up all of these, that would be the same as half of the circumference. Does that make sense? Half. OK? Half the circumference. And from back here, but how half the circumference is equal to pi times r. All right? Yep. So, kind of put it all together. If I came over here and I knew the radius of the circle and I said pi times r, 
whatever that radius measures, then that would tell me how long the sum of all of those bumpies are. All right? <coughs> Pi times r, and this guy's r here. The next part that looks a lot like this. The idea is the same. The only thing that's different is the number of pieces that we use. We use more pieces. Okay? In this case, 22 pieces. But the concept is the same. Cut them up. Half of them point down, the other half point up, right? Like, like the binders, yeah. right? They, stop, they stack alternatingly, okay? But how long is it from here to there? Okay. Uh, I have a question on how would you be able to tell how many things you have to cut out? How many? Uh, you have to 14 the last one. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I do this thing, and then I get another circle, and I do this, and then I get another circle. We're talking about, like, we're inching our way towards a lot of these little slices of pie, okay? We're just showing what it looks like to do it for more pieces, and more pieces, and more pieces, and more pieces, okay? To get to that rectangle, we're going to build this rectangle out of a circle, we have to cut up a lot of pieces, right? So how far is it from here to there? What part of the circle is that? The radius, still the radius, right? This, these pieces, even though they're skinny, when I cut it from here to there, right? from here to there, each side of that is equal to the radius. So all of these, this one, this one, this one, this one, they're all just however long the radius is. So, radius r, right? Again, half of the curvy parts are up here, half of them are down here, okay? If I add up all of them, I get the same as the circumference, but if I only add up the top ones, I get what? Half, half the circumference, which is equal to? Pi one pi r. r. One pi r. One pi r. All right, now here is the big leap, which is kind of difficult to wrap your brain around. I don't even know if anybody really wraps their brain around this, but we're going to cut this circle into an infinite number of pieces. Okay? Not a lot of pieces not really a lot of pieces, not a billion or a trillion or a quadrillion, I mean an infinite number of pieces. There is no number big enough to express how many pieces we're gonna cut this into. Yeah, now when you... Be a big circle. <laughs> be a small circle. You, this is not something we could actually do, right? I can't actually do anything to infinity. At some point, as a human being, I have to stop doing things. I will die, at least, at the very least I'll die and I can't do it anymore, right? Even if I cut this thing into tiny, tiny pieces for the rest of my life, could come into an infinite number of pieces. But in math, we can do things for infinity. Right? Yeah. Right? And strange things happen at infinity. When we do things for an infinite amount of time, or we, we add up an infinite number of things, funny things start to happen. Okay? The funny thing that happens here, when we cut it into an infinite number of pieces, oh, God. and stack them up all alternatingly, like we have already, okay? <laughs> Why do you give up? Oh. <laughs> you stack up an infinite number of these. Now the measurements that we're going to look at here are the same as this, right? Still radius. Okay, but the only thing is these pieces are so thin because there's an infinite number of them. They're so skinny that this actually is a 90 degree angle. Perfectly like that. It's not, it's not off at all. It's 90 degrees. Okay, this is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees. What am I doing there? 90 degrees. Okay. If that's one weird thing that happens, that, that the pieces get so thin that there's a 90 degree angle between here and there. The other thing that's funny that happens at infinity that's sometimes hard to accept is that up on top here, Unlike this, where it's bumpy, because it comes from the outside of the circle, it is actually perfectly flat. Not bumpy at all. Okay? It's not a trillion pieces, not a billion pieces or anything. It's infinite. What happens when you cut this into an infinite number of pieces, you kind of think of it this way. The, the two lines that you cut, like this side of the pie and this side of the pie, are like the same side. So the outside right there, just one point, okay? It's not curved, it's just one point. What happens when you put a bunch of points next to each other? You get a line, okay? And this is crazy infinity stuff. Well, you can trust me, 
<laughs> that this is a 90 degree angle and this is perfectly flat. Okay. Can we imagine that happens? That's not too hard to imagine, right? Just takes a little bit of a leap of faith maybe, or that little gap of it, but isn't it still bumpy? No, it's not. It is a perfectly straight line, all right? So if this is a perfectly straight line and this is a perfectly straight line, these are all 90 degree angles, then what is the shape? Rectangle. rectangle. And how do we find the area of a rectangle? Uh, base times height. Base times height. Let's, let's look at what the base and the height of this rectangle are. And this rectangle is just made out of the circle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have the same pieces, right? Same area. Mm -hmm. How long is this from here to there? It's just the side of a piece that we cut out. Radius. The radius. What if I add up all the, the bottom yeah, parts? Half, what, how much half. is half the circumference, which is equal to? One, one pi r. One pi r. Base, height. Base and height. Pi r for the base, r for the height. So when we plug that into base times height, we get one pi r for the base, times r for the height. And what's r times r? r times r is r squared, just like 2 times 2 is 2 squared, 5 times 5 is 5 squared, r times r is r squared. Pi r squared, does that sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. Get a circle, pi r squared. Cody, or Cole? So wouldn't it be 2 pi r, because they're both on both sides? Uh, it's squared. Oh, Did we just count? never mind. Somebody, you got to clear it up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, not ours. Yeah, we, yeah, we can't hear ours. Oh, I know. Just reminding you. Eventually we won't flexibly jump up and try to leave. But. <laughs> So, you may have known, probably did know, that the area of a circle can be calculated by, by doing pi times the radius squared. Who knew that to start with? Two people. Two people. Who knew that the area formula for a circle is pi r squared? All right. Who has heard of pi r squared before? Just it was out there at the university, you've heard it before. Okay, if you didn't know it now, you, not only do you know it, you can see Bastard. why that could be true. This is not the only way to show this pi r squared thing. There's lots of different, you could turn the pieces into a triangle, you can turn the pieces into other shapes, you can use a uh, calculus, you can use all sorts of things to show pi r squared is how you find the area of a circle. But this is nice, because this turns it into a rectangle, and what's easier to find the area of than a rectangle? Nothing. Rectangles are the best thing for finding the area of, okay? So, you have all these formulas now. You got the area of a rectangle is pi, or sorry, base times height. You got circle, or triangles are one half base times height. You got parallelograms are base times height. You got trapezoids, which are one half base one plus base two times the height. Okay. All these formulas that, if I just told you what they were, gave you a list of the formulas and which shape they find the area of, that would just be a bunch of memorization, which would be a big bummer. But now, we have a way that if we're not sure which formula is for which shape, or I just look at the shape, I can't remember what the formula for the area is. We can create that formula. Okay. And it's not just area formulas. It's just an example. This area is a pretty simple thing that you're familiar with. Right? You use it as an example of all of mathematics. There's so many instances where we try to memorize things, we don't have to. We can actually understand why something is the way that it is. Right? Like I'm going to have you do something here. Where I don't think we're going to get to the very end of it today, or probably Monday. But we're going to go through an exercise that's going to help us to understand why we multiply fractions the way we do. You may know how to multiply, like how to multiply fractions, but you don't probably know why you multiply fractions straight across. It kind of seemed like magic. When I was in school, I thought, that's really convenient. That's nice. If I multiply fractions, just multiply straight across. That's all. Easy. Right? But if you don't know why that is, then you can confuse it, especially if you're going to try to find common denominators when you multiply fractions, which a lot of people do. You could cross multiply, which a lot of people do. Okay? But we're going to try and demystify that. What's that? How's that circle By this whole thing we talked about? So we cut it into pieces. Okay, we put them all through anything like that. We, okay. Now let's put it all back together, we'll cut it into more pieces, we'll do the same thing. And then we'll put it all back together, we'll cut it into an infinite number of pieces. 
When you do that infinitely, all those skinny pieces become so skinny that this is the 90 degree angles all around. Okay? This is perfectly straight, so what we've made is a rectangle from all those really skinny pieces. Some of them pointing down, the other half pointing up, alternating. And how long is like a long piece and a small piece? Long piece and a small piece? Like there's a long line and a small line. This one and this one, for the same reason that this is short and this bottom part is long. This is the radius and this is all the like half of the outside. And that's what this is, only it's made of infinity. Half of the outside, half the circumference right there, and the radius. Right. So like right here on the very edge is this impossibly thin, 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 thin piece of this. Did it or did it not? Yeah. It didn't. Maybe try and imagine that it's just trillions and trillions and trillions of skinny, skinny, skinny slices. Okay? Not 22, not 14, but just the biggest number you can imagine of the number of slices that we put into this alternating binder like stack of pieces of pie. Does that make a little more sense? Imagine instead of 22 pieces, which is a lot, we actually have like a trillion or a Google or the biggest number you could possibly imagine. That's how many pieces we have. Right? So it becomes so skinny that we get a 90 degree angle here and a flat side here, straight side there, and now we just have a rectangle. Can you do this type of height? Okay? Alright. Um, I'm supposed to have something after that. I don't know where, what I did with it. But, um, unless there's more questions about that circle, or trapezoids, or anything like that, okay? I would like you to do this. The instructions are up there. Multiply those numbers together without a calculator. Find the area of these rectangles. Okay. Whose multiplication skills are kind of rusty? A little bit. I would expect probably all of you a little bit rusty, but yeah. Nope. All right. So anyway, anyway, let me undo that. Let's just run through it real quick. Okay. And we're gonna find a connection between not just 43 times 54 is how I would find the area of this rectangle, right? We're going to see a cool connection between the area and not just the answer, but the actual steps that we take, right? We're going to demystify those as well. So to start with, if we follow these steps that we normally take, we would do 4 times 3, right? Yeah. And we get 12, but we don't put 12 here. One there, there. Two there, one there, okay? Four times four then? Sixteen plus one is seventeen. Seventeen. And then? Below that, five times three is fifteen. Uh huh, but we put a one here. Yeah, <laughs> and then four uh -huh. times five is twenty, plus one is twenty-one. And then add those numbers together uh -huh. is two hundred. Two thousand three hundred. Two hundred twenty-eight. Three, 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 one there, three, two. Two thousand three hundred twenty-two? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I forgot to do that. 172. I forgot to put the one there. Ah. So we're going to, that right there, you can multiply two numbers together. You can get the answer, the product, without having any idea what the connection between those steps are and actually figuring out what 43 times 54. Four 
we get out of here, let me just remind you what 43 times 54 even means. Okay? You can see it really nicely in a, in a rectangle in front of the area, but let's, let's pretend like we are ancient uh, merchants. They had to do a lot of math. Okay? Multiplication is a way to find out how many is it if I have 43 54s. Okay? So I'm an ancient merchant, I'm in the, in the, the marketplace, right? And I have, let's say, 43 bags. 43 bags. And what is in every bag? 54 items. 54 what? 54 what? Ice creams. Ice creams? Ice creams? Yeah. 54 ice cream. Let's make them sandwiches. Kind of like them. So 4354, you know, how do these steps count all of them? That's what we're going to explain next time, okay? So we've got about 30 seconds here packed up, ready to go.